pardon me, do you happen to have a match? Just a minute, Sinjin. I've been looking for you. Now, now, take it easy, Margie. I, I know I'm a couple of days late, but I just put your alimony in the mail. When? Yesterday. How did you send it? By Pony Express, like you did the last time? No, but I sent it to the wrong address so I could have a few days' grace. Who's grace? Well, you don't understand, Margie. I've been out of work for a while, but I've got a job now. If I don't get that check by the end of the week, you'll be playing piano in the Sing Sing Orchestra. Hey, Sinjin! Hiya, Bill. Excuse me, for good. Hiya, Bill. How have you been, fella? Fine, I'm glad to see you, kid. I've been wondering where you were. Gone with anybody yet? Yeah, I'm going with Harry James. Hey, that's a swell outfit. Say, what about you? I'm going with Thornhill. Well, they're coming along. I wonder what time it is. My watch stopped again. It's a... Uh... Oh, <laughs> my watch is being fixed. How about getting together sometime? All right, fine. I tell you, I'm staying with a friend, so I better call you. Fine, I'm at the Edison. Goodbye, St. So long, kid. Good luck. Thanks. Well, I'm going upstairs, too. Fine. Mezzanine, please. Oh, by the way, Mr. Wolfington, weren't you stocking some game when I came along? I had that specimen stuffed once, right over my fireplace. Mm -hmm. Goodbye, old-timer, and good luck. <laughs> Look, I'm not trying to follow you, but I get off here, too. This is getting a little awkward after saying goodbye twice. <laughs> well, maybe if you keep on wishing me luck, I'll have some. Well, this is where I get off. This time it's final, Sinjin. Goodbye, and I mean good luck. Say, are you going in here? Yeah, I'm meeting Thornhill. Well, that's funny. I'm supposed to meet James here. You don't suppose the two bands are merging? Hey, what is all this? Hey, fellas, there's Sinjin and Bill. Why, you sad man. You poor soul. <laughs> <laughs> what are you fellas doing here? We all have appointments. James or Thornhill? Sammy Kay. I'm supposed to meet Bob Crosby. It's beginning to make sense. Is it? Don't you get the angle? Somebody is trying to take over Gene's band as a unit. Send out a bunch of phony telegrams just so we don't get wise to it. Hey, there's Phil, the last one. Come on in, Phil. We were expecting you. Hiya, Phil. All right. Who are you meeting here, Lombardo? I'm supposed to meet Benny Goodman. But if Buddy's playing with him, I'm quitting before I ever start. Don't worry about that. I'm going with Bob Crosby. Well, if you fellas would really like to know who's raiding Gene's band, take a gander. Hi, fellas. Hi. Hey. This is wonderful. I didn't know there's any sentiment left in the band business. It's swell. This is a real tribute. While you can dry up those crocodile tears, your trick is pretty obvious. What are you talking about? Why these phony telegrams you used to get us here? You mean, you mean you boys didn't send for me? What a performance. Listen, I don't know anything about any telegrams. Well, I got one myself. Yeah, he got a wire from a cooperative band. They want him to take over as leader. I didn't like the idea, but here I am. Then I walked in here and I saw the whole gang together again, and I thought... Well, I think you're lying in your teeth. Well, what of it? We're all together again, aren't we? Well, let's stay together. We're too good to split up. I'm sorry, but this hasn't changed anything for me. I'll never work in a band again as long as Buddy's in it. That goes double. Callan would never let me work in his band again. Thanks for being noble, darling. But um, I've changed my mind. But, Carolyn, I Look, thought Look, I you... don't hold a grudge. Natalie and I are good friends now. We're even taking lessons from the same English teacher. Well, if you think for one minute oh, that I... Oh, why don't you stop? I've let you play the outraged husband long enough. I won't permit you to... Now, look here, pillow boy. Carolyn's convinced that was just a lot of stupid gossip. You're as smart as Carolyn, aren't you? Now, why don't you sit down and take those wings off? Where's Gina? Oh... Oh, Jean, darling, you've made me the happiest girl in the world. Why, when I got that cute little box and read the card to Baby from Jean Moss, and I, I thought it was just another compact. But when I saw this, well, you could have pushed me over with the moving van. <laughs> oh, and Jean, I must thank you for this gorgeous mink coat. How did you know I'd always wanted one? Oh, it was uh, nothing at all. I'm glad you like it. I had it appraised by a pawnbroker the moment I got it. You'll never believe how much it cost. Look, isn't it wonderful? Every pill is absolutely perfect. Did I buy those things? You ought to know. Oh, but I don't. What do you care? Did the trick, didn't it? Made it worth it? I'll let you know the first of the month. Boys, we got a chance to open Glen Island Casino on Thursday. So just for old time's sake, how about a rehearsal at 2 o'clock? Well, how do you like this old ham? Staggering in here and crying, when all the time he knew he had an opening set for Thursday night. But we're all for you, Gene. We'll blow our brains out for you. <laughs>
Won't we, fellas? Yeah. Yeah. Well... Wonderful. We open Thursday night. Oh, thank goodness. Well, I don't know about that. Why? You should have seen Gene's face when he found out he'd bought a mink coat and a diamond necklace. <laughs> <laughs> He's going to be awfully happy, though, when he finds out I arranged 90 days credit for him. Oh. <laughs> Say, there's only one thing, though. In all those wires that we sent out, I uh, didn't notice any for Janie. There wasn't any. Very feminine and very smart. Connie, hmm? what about you and Bill? I'm not doing anything about that. No, no, no. No, St. John, it was my fault, really, that the band broke up. And for Bill's sake, I had to get them back together again. So, now that everything's all right with him, he'll look me up if he misses me and wants me. Thanks for helping. Don't mention it, Pigeon. <laughs> I was about to draw a bead on you, but just in time, I remembered who you are. Dr. Ward, are you an MD, sir? Yes. Would you handle an emergency in the bar? What's wrong? The cigarette girl has burned her uh, uh, stomach. That's interesting. Yes, sir, the whole tray blew up. You go ahead, Dad. I'll be at the table. Oh, Eshian, will you show the young lady the table 14? Uh, this way, doctor, please. Okay, boys, break it up. It's opening night, so let's make it a good one. Huh? Okay, come on. Yeah, sir, Chief. Right. Hold on a minute, fellas. What's the matter? Did you see a creditor out there? Oh, nothing. Nothing. Wait a minute. What's out there, anyway? Nothing, I tell you. Now, grab a hold of yourself, Bill. Don't let her get under your skin again. She broke up the band once. I'm telling you, she's bad medicine. If you have anything more to do with her, you're crazy. I guess you're right. I guess you're wrong. Did you fellows ever stop to think of who sent those wires out that got this band together again? You mean Connie did that? With my help. The mink and diamonds were my idea. What? Wait, Bill, the show's going on. So you thought of the mink. Did you ever hear of rabbit, you rat? Oh, gorgeous. Hello, Bill. I've only got a minute, but gosh, it's great to see you. Since you just told me about those telegrams, why didn't you look me up, Sarah? Oh, did I look you up? Why, you're here, aren't you? It's our opening night. Well, I came with a friend. It was his idea. Well, I didn't think you'd mind since we're separated. What do you mean by friend? How much of a friend? Well, I don't think you'd understand about a Bill because he's a little bit older than I am, but I love him. That's ridiculous. You love me. Even if we did have a little trouble, otherwise you wouldn't have cared what happened to the band. Well, I thought I owed you that much. Look here, you're my wife and you're going to stay my wife. Oh, Bill, I, I want you to meet Mr. Mr. Burns. A little older? This guy is older than Methuselah. I beg your pardon, young man. Why, you ought to be ashamed of yourself chasing a young girl like this. This is Mr. Abbott, Horace, darling. Never mind introducing us. I don't want to know him. Well, how do you like that? Connie, you can't be serious about this old Joe. You're just doing this because you want to needle me. Young man, this is my table. Will you get out of here? I'll get out, but not because it's your table. I've got to play the show, but I'll be back. Look, any trouble we've had, we can talk out. Just set this old coot straight on the whole thing. But we haven't anything to talk about. You told me I was a terrible orchestra wife and walked out on me. Oh, but gorgeous, I didn't know how much I'd miss you then. That's changed everything. Goodbye, Mr. Burns. Why don't you run along and find someone your own age? About 104. Young man? Burnsy? Think it's all right? <laughs> 